Oh, in order to pre and post process uh, the Calculix cases, we need two helper um, programs. Um, one is Unical 3, which we use to convert UNV files, the mesh files, into the Calculix mesh format, and the FRD to VTK converter mixer, which we use to convert the results of Calculix to the VTK format, which however you can visualize. So both of these files are in pre-compiled versions available on our Google Drive, so we can download those. Um, anyway, I want to save that. And the place where I want to save it is my home drive and .local bin, which is where I keep my local executables. So if I, if you don't see that, then most likely you have not activated the display of the hidden files, because on Unix systems, configuration files are stored in what we call dot files, which start with a leading dot in the file name, and they are usually hidden in most Linux file managers and in this file selector for saving files, you can activate the hidden file display with a control H, which I just hit, and then you see all the hidden files are displaced. So we go to .local, bin, and just save that file. And we save the Unical 3 as well in the same directory home directory local dot local slash bin. So here again, I don't see, I have my um, dot files activated. If I click H, uh, control H, I hide them again, control H, visible again. So go to dot local. Bin, and we see FRD to VTK converter and down there. All the PyFirm stuff goes in there as well, and the Unicom. Both of these are not made executable yet because you downloaded them from the internet. The system does not, by default, allow you to execute them, although the system knows they are executable files. But well, in order to do that, you need to go to File, right click, Properties and in permissions, just say allow executing file as program. And that will set that file to be executable. An alternative method to make files executable is via the change mod command, change mode command. So let me change into a local bin, dot local slash bin directory. And let me see what how the FRD to VTK converter looks like. And let me see how the Unical 3 looks like. These triplets are the access rights for the file. So three letters each. The first one has a different meaning. So it's groups of three letters. And that means owner gets three letters. The group gets three letters, which is the same as the owner in this case. So every user has its own group, but there are other groups which put multiple users together. And the last triplet is others. So at the moment, the owner and members of the group have all the rights on Unical 3, read, write, and execute, while the others have read and execute rights only. So they cannot change this. Um, here, on the FRD to VTK converter, we have RW only, which is read write for the owner and group members, and read for the other for other users. Um, the directory itself will not allow other users in, so you don't need to worry about the other user rights. If you are paranoid, you can take those user rights away by saying change mod. O for others minus RW, X for Unical 3, for example, and then you will see that others cannot do anything anymore.
Um, but what we want is actually we want to look at the FRD to VTK converter, and I want to show you how you can make that executable without going through the right-click properties, making it executable thing here. But if you want to do that on the command line, you do say change mod plus X, and then just say FRD to VTK converter. If you want only the owner to be able to execute that, then you say user group, so the, it's user group others. So uh, I said owner, so that is confusing. The user, the group, and the others. So O is for others, not for owner. So if I want a user and group to be able to execute that, I just say UG plus X FRD to VTK converter. And now I have that executable. And that is how these access rights work. The access rights, if you only do it for a single file, are also available here. So the owner can read and write, group can read and write, others, for example, get none. And if I do that, you will see that this has now changed and the last R is gone and the others just have three dashes, which means they don't have any rights to that at all. But Having done that, I can now just execute that because for me, the dot local slash bin is in my path. Like in Windows, you if you put programs into locations where the system does not normally look for it, then you need to add that to your path. In my case, that's already done. It may have been the case uh, made uh, uh, part of the path already on your system. If it is not, you want to go and edit the configuration file for your shell. And the easiest editor on your systems is gedit. And the configuration file for your shell, which by default will be the so-called bash, the born again shell, is again a dot file. So it starts with a dot, the shell name, and an RC or configuration files um, and if you open that you get the editor and in that editor you just at the bottom enter this line export space all capitals path equals the dollar sign which is the name of a variable or the um, denotes a variable, so dollar $home, that's the content of the variable home, which is your home directory, slash dot local slash bin, and then importance, otherwise you have deleted all the other path, a colon and the content of the path variable. So this extends the path variable with dollar $home dot local slash bin, col uh, and then it, uh, the system will look in that directory first and then in all the other directories that are in the path. Once you've added and entered that into your config file, you just save that, close that editor, and then you will need to reopen your terminal because otherwise it will not reload that config file. And then you should be able to just execute these. If I start to call frd to vtk converter.exe, then it doesn't do that. It will tell you exec format error, which is not surprising if we know that the that this .exe is indeed a Windows executable. It is part of the Mono framework or the C Sharp framework is, that is available on Windows. We need to install that on our systems. sudo apt install mono complete which will ask you for your password because of the sudo and then that will again install quite a lot of things but it shouldn't take too long and after that we should be able to simply start that program
if you are working on the Azure lab virtual desktops, they already have these two, system, uh, these two programs installed and your Bash RC already has that in the path. So you should simply be able to call Unical3 and FRD VTK converter.exe directly. So Unical3 takes only one um, parameter, and that is the file name of the UNB file without the extension in this case. FRD converter is a bit more complicated because that takes the FRD file. So let me change into my base file. And if I do the FRD to a VTK converter, then I just give it the input file usually, but it will complain, oh, sorry, the FRD file, but it will complain that it doesn't find the file. This is a bit weird because for some reason, the C sharp framework doesn't look into the, in the local directory, but you need to give it the per, uh, full path. So what we need to do here is we need to give it dot slash tube FRD. So because as you see here, it looks in the direction where the executable is and not in the directory where you are uh, executing it. So if I say FRD to VTK converter, and I have run the case already, so it will now go through the FRD file. And then ask me how many time steps do I want to convert? And then it will. So we will get back to that in a later video when I show you how you can um, visualize the results of an FSI run. So I will stop this video here. We have installed the two helper programs. So into the number of time steps 90, and it will then just write out the new files. And I'll show you how we can visualize those later on.